Good morning, Lakeview. Good morning. Good morning. All of you here and those online are here in God's presence this morning. And we want to give him the praise and express our joy to be with him in, in this place. Let's all stand as we sing. else to shout about today. You got nothing else to shout about today. Let's shout out some praise of the Lord. Go right ahead. Do it. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the privilege you give to us to be in your house today. You've invited us. You've called us. And we're here for you, Lord. We're here for you offer you glory and honor and praise. You are worthy of all of that and more. And Lord, we just want to take this time, focus our thoughts on you, who you are, what you've done for us, what you're calling us to in our future. Lord, we, we thank you and praise you and ask that today you would be honored and glorified in everything we say and do. 
every word of our mouth, every thought in our mind, Lord, every action that we do. do it, we do it for you, Lord, for your glory and honor. We ask also that you, by your spirit, would speak into us, Lord, today. So that it's not, not coming from us, but it's you coming through us. And uh, we'll just give you the glory and the praise, Lord, in every way. As we ask it now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Thanks. You can have a seat. It's so good to be in God's house with you this morning. There, there may be one or two visitors today. I'm just thinking. It's glad to have you here. <laughs> All you. Thank you so much. And if you're online watching, we're glad that you're with us as well. I do want to just add this thought. There are connection cards in the pew in front of you. There's one that you can do, fill out online and send to us. Uh, this is just an opportunity for us to get to know what's going on in each other's lives. We're family here at Lakeview Chapel, and we want to know what's going on in our family's life. So if you have praises, God's answered prayer, you've seen amazing things, jot it down, let us know. You can drop the cards in the offering box at the back of the sanctuary. Uh, email those in. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. Uh, family prays for one another. And so I encourage you to do that. Let us know so we can be praying for you and uh, let us know. The other thing is, uh, whether you're here, whether you're at home, please, please, please engage in the worship today. Don't be a spectator. Don't say, oh, I wonder what's going to happen next. No, jump right in, all right? Uh, there's no wrong, well, I shouldn't say there's no wrong. God will be happy with your worship today, all right? Do it. Let's do that. Uh, I have a couple quick announcements as, uh, as we get ready to start. And first thing is a video. I wanted to show this to you last week. Couldn't do it. But uh, this is a thank you video from the Christian Mission Line. So if we're ready upstairs, let's show that. Jesus says to love your neighbor. We need to be asking ourselves, God, what is my role? How do you want me to be a light? We decided we were going to open up our facility every day, invite these migrant people, let them shower, provide them with hygiene items. We were serving breakfast to 30, 40, 50 people a day. And with every opportunity to serve them came an opportunity to share the love of Christ. 30% of people that live in our communities just don't have clean water to drink or to utilize in their homes. This last year, we were able to help a local farmer put in a deep well in his community, and he's able to now garden and farm year round. And out of this, he's had more opportunities to engage the farmers in his village, and many have come to faith and they've actually started a fellowship. We planted ourselves in the university zone and all of a sudden we realized there's a hidden international community in the area. All kinds of people that needed a good coffee shop and then we end up talking about Jesus. We've actually started a monthly English international church. One of the really cool things that's happening in Colombia and it's also happening in Chile is that they have developed missionary training centers. And so the students come and spend one or two years learning intentionally how to be missionaries in the Alliance who ideally are going to take the gospel even further along. The humanitarian supplies we are able to send to the war zone are to refugees, to other cities. We grew from 10 churches to almost 30 this year. They go to the churches for help, but they also go because it's a place of hope. It's a, a time of great need and many sorrows and tragedies, but it's also a time that has opened the hearts of people to the gospel. We have responded to a felt need of unaccompanied minors who arrive in Spain, escaping from very tragic situations, lodging, food, clothing, safety, friendship. Our home is also their home. We're excited about investing in the next generation, about bringing interns alongside of us and having short-term trips come and experience what it looks like to be the peace of Jesus in a hard place. That's just how we continue to multiply ourselves. That's how Jesus is glorified. That's how the kingdom is built. And we're just absolutely thrilled and excited to work with young people who are hungry. We are currently working with young teenage girls and young adult women, refugees who have fled a humanitarian crisis in their home country. We've been providing space so that they could deal with very traumatic experiences that they've endured. We also take time to read scripture and we discuss those scriptures. A couple years ago, we started the Alliance Bible Institute. We have 20 students preparing for ministry. Another component is working with the youth, preparing the next generation 
to reach Japan. We've been here for over 39 years. The longer you're here, you see the fruit of all these years. God is working. We say often, we couldn't go without the Alliance Church and we wouldn't want to. Without the support of the larger Alliance, we couldn't stay. To be able to find something practical that you can do to help, that brings great joy. It has meant everything. We just are so grateful for churches and, and individuals in the U.S. who support us and make this possible. It's not ours, it's all of ours. And we count the privilege to be on this end of that team effort. Knowing that we were not alone made all the difference. We're not alone. We're not in this journey on our own. You've supported ministries that are very dear to our hearts. We want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. All who have given to Great Commission Fund, the Alliance Missions over this past year, um, praise the Lord. Thank you for your giving. You just get a, a glimpse there of how God is using that, not only your financial gifts, but your prayer. Um, God answers prayers, and, uh, and so keep it up. I just want to make a quick reminder. Our uh, faith pro these aren't in your bulletin. I took one from the They're on the table in the back. Uh, but our faith promise year runs calendar year. And so we're starting a new year. If, if you didn't this fall when we uh, did our missions emphasis, if you didn't fill out a, a faith promise card and you were saying, oh, I was wondering, I meant to do that, now's the time. Uh, pick one up on your way out this morning and, uh, and just pray. Ask the Lord. Prayerfully ask the Lord, what do you want me to do this year? How can I be involved in spreading your love, your peace, your truth around the world? Uh, and then listen to what he tells you. Right? Uh, some of you will be able to give. All of you are able to pray. Many of you, or some of you might be able to go. Do it. All right? There. Don't forget that. Uh, one last thing. This is family stuff this morning. We have some joyous family news. Uh, we're receiving two new members today. Yes. And so... I'm going to ask the Dyers and the elders if they'll come and join me at the front. And uh, in your bulletin, just so you're ready, there is uh, our members' covenant. So especially those who are members will want to be taking a look at that. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. But I want to introduce you to, wow, you've seen them already a while. <laughs> Blair and Carrie Dyer. We're glad to have them here with us as members at, at, at Lakeview Chapel. So, Mike is going to lead us through the uh, Members' Covenant. Uh, and uh, this is just for all of us. Oh, did you bring a copy with you? No, of course not. Okay, you want to share? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Who has their Members' copy right there? Uh, we'll get it. Uh, thank you. Great. We'll share. Because <laughs> it's for all of us. So, got it. Good. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead, Mike. Having received Christ, Christ as my, my Lord, Lord and Savior, and, Savior, and been that. baptized, and being in agreement with Lakeview Chapel's statements, strategy, and structure, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with the Lakeview Chapel church family. In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following. Connecting to God by lifting up Christ through prayer and praise, not only during weekly services, but also in my personal life. Learning about Christ through weekend services, small groups, and personal Bible reading and study. Connecting to people by loving as Christ through being proactive in sharing Christ's love through involvement in a small group and in my actions and my attitudes toward people both those inside and those outside the church. Laboring for Christ through using my talents and time to support the ongoing ministries of Lakeview Chapel. Connecting people to God by linking others to Christ through always looking for opportunities to draw unsaved people 
God has placed in my sphere of influence into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and inviting them to opportunities at Lakeview and through the regular support of the Great Commission Fund with finances and prayer. Connecting to Lakeview by, by supporting the mission through regular prayer for its leaders and ministries, through regular attendance to its ministries, and through regular giving of my time, my talent, and my treasure. That is something as members here at Lakeview Chapel that we say, this is what we want to do, this is what we're about. Blair and Carrie are joining us in that, and we are grateful. And so we want to just take a moment to pray together. And so as I lead in this prayer, would you please join us in prayer, not just for them, but for all of us here at Lakeview Chapel. Precious Father God, Jesus, the head of the church, Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of Christ, our God, three in one, we thank you for adopting us into your family. I pray for the members of Lakeview Chapel whom you've brought together today to bring you glory and continue your work in this world. Especially for Blair and Carrie, our newest members, as well as all our most senior members. We pray today for your presence and power to fill us anew. We've committed our lives to you and to one another so that we can together grow up and mature in our new life in Christ. Help us to help one another connect more deeply with you in what we learn and in how we live. Lord God, guide and empower us to connect with people around us so we can develop relationships that express your love, both in, in what we say and what we do. I ask, Lord, that Blair and Carrie's circle of contacts increase the radius of our range so that we can love more people with the love that you have lavished on us. And Lord God, would you allow the seeds of the gospel that you've given to us to be planted fruitful as we connect other people to you, introducing them to the love and life that you have given to us in Jesus. So we, the members here at Lakeview Chapel, both new and seasoned, renew and recommit to this covenant with one another and with you, Lord. We confess, we confess that we cannot do this on our own. We need you, Lord. We need the precious gift that you have given to us in one another. Remind us today and every day of these vows until the day when we finally see you coming on the clouds in power and great glory. May your name be praised forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now, this is where everybody in here gets to walk up front and shake. No, we're not going to do that today. <laughs> But be sure and catch Blair and Carrie and welcome them to the family. Would you do that? Absolutely. All right. Yep. All right. God bless you guys. We're so glad to have you here. God bless you, Blair.
give light. You are love. You bring light in the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath.
I just wanted to give you a brief update on our progress on uh, the pastor search committee. Um, as I said, in December, we put together a team, and this Thursday night, we're going to have our first meeting, and during that meeting, we're going to, you know, communicate to the whole team the details of the process and uh, start working on the uh, church profile and the pastor profile, what, who we are and what we're looking for. And then, uh, you know, that's, we'll go on from there. So I want to introduce to you, and many of you know, our Reverend Dave Lynn, District Superintendent from Northeast District, and he's here to share with us. Dave. Good morning, church. Good morning. good morning. So good to be with you. What a great time of worship we've had so far. Hey, totally love that song, and I appreciate your engagement, uh, because what we're talking about in a pastor coming here is not just about what the humans do to find resumes and do all that kind of stuff. Because we're going to do a really good job at that, I tell you honestly. So right over there is Dave Murphy. Go ahead and raise. Everybody knows Dave. Show that. Dr. Sally Fry is right over there. Uh, David is the, um, well, we used to call him assistant to the DS. It's church advanced specialist at this point. Uh, but he works with me and will praying with you. Sally Fry actually is a specialist in helping to assess people, figure out how God has gifted them and all those kinds of things. And so we're going to use all of that stuff. Uh, but you know what? The Bible says, and I'm a dumb Bible guy, and I hope you are too, or gal, <laughs> that God actually gives pastors in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers so what we're doing is we're trying to be available to God so that we're listening and praying and the huge thing that we need to come out with and and I just want to encourage you to be very prayerful about this what we're looking for after we do all the good work that we're doing all these high level assessments and resumes and listening to sermons and getting references and all this kind of stuff is we are looking for God to generate within us a tremendous sense of confidence that he has spoken. Because we need that, don't we? You know, yeah. if, if uh, you know, th there's, a, there's sort of a famous saying that I wish no one ever said, and that is, the church is the only hope of the world. And when people say that, I'm like, have you seen the church lately? <laughs> I'm a broken person who's totally put together by Jesus. <laughs> and, and so this is a moment for God to work. And so I would encourage you, be very prayerful about it. Um, I appreciate the fact that your leaders are already uh, wired into the, the sequence here that we've got going. Um, but it isn't the sequence that actually brings the pastor 
It's the Lord and his Holy Spirit. So be very much in prayer. And also, um, you know, uh, in the Christian Missionary Alliance, um, you know, we don't have like a vacuum sealed system. And what we've discovered uh, over 10 years of placing pastors and other Christian workers is that you might know the person and I might not. And sometimes we get a pastor uh, who comes to us through a means no one could have guessed in advance because God has plans, amen? And sometimes it's a surprise. Like, for example, David, the shepherd boy, is out there with the sheep, ends up as the king of Israel. And sometimes that happens as well in terms of the way that you know we, God brings somebody to us. So I encourage you to be prayerful. Uh, be communicating with your leaders. If you don't hear what's going on, demand that they tell you. <laughs> and uh, just be praying very much as we go through this process. Anyway, God bless you. So good to be here. Our scripture this morning is found in 1 John chapter 4. We're reading verses 7 through 21. Knowing God through love. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him, and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us, God is love. And the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And we have this commandment from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. Well, at this time, our uh, kids can head out for Children's Church, and our access group can head on downstairs uh, for their meeting this morning. So we'll see you all a little bit. And the rest of you, sit put, stay put here, right? We get to spend some time in God's Word together this morning. <clears throat> As everyone is aware, uh, 
Last Sunday, the snow kept us from gathering together. And so now this morning, I have two sermons. Get comfortable. No. No, we're not doing that. All right, just kidding. But it was interesting because I want, I want to just tell you this little story of how this all happened. I, I planned to introduce this sermon series in the month of January by, by saying I only have four more opportunities to speak to you this way before I retire. And now that number is three. And so I thought and I prayed a lot about what God wanted me to leave with you this month of January. Uh, and I prayerfully asked the Lord, you know, what, what do you want? And this is the question that came into my mind. What are the four things that I hope that you have heard from me and seen in me these last four years? What are the four things? That if, if narrow, I had to narrow it down to four. So uh, <clears throat> what are those things? And so I, I thought about that, and Mike reminded me that it sounded an awful lot like what Paul wrote to the Philippian church in, uh, when he said, Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and, and saw me doing. Keep, keep doing it. And so that's, <clears throat> that's where the Lord was leading me. So I desire to leave Lakeview Chapel, our Lakeview Chapel family, on a firm foundation to help you stand firm, not just during the transition period, which is important, but also moving forward into the new thing that God is planning to do in your life and in this church. Right? And he told us that. I'm going to do a new thing. What is it? Let's see. Here we go, God. We got to be, as, as David and Mike have both shared, we do all, our, all the things that we're supposed to do, do the things that we know we're supposed to do, but then God's going to do it. God's going to take care of it. And so we're going to trust him with that. <clears throat> I'd hope to begin... Uh, these four things with the realization that for every Jesus follower, your life and everything about it is all about Jesus. I hope you heard that, all right, from me before because I'm not going to say it again. That's it. That was last week. And I, and I thought uh, as I was then thinking, okay, let's go right to the second thing. And it, this is the story this week that was just this, whew, thank you, Lord. I found everything is all about Jesus. And what we're going to talk about today did this, just all together. So you didn't really need two sermons, just needed one good one. So that's what, uh, Lord willing, that's what's going to happen today. All right? Today I want to follow that thought that it's all about Jesus with the second thing that I really hope you've heard from me. I really pray that you've seen this in my life as well. I know I've said it a lot of times, but have you heard it? Here's the quiz. Start with a quiz. What are the two most important things that Jesus said he wants his followers to do? Yeah, it was kind of in the title, wasn't it? This is like an open book quiz for you. Love God, love people. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus was asked by an expert in the law who was trying to trip him up with something to get him in trouble. He said, teacher, what, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus said to him, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And then he went on to say this, and the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus added this in, in, in Matthew twenty two forty, The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. That's why I say that's those two things Jesus really wanted us to get. Wrap our heads around, grab a hold of, and hang on to. Because it really doesn't get much clearer than this. If I desire... To obey my creator God, what do I need to do? Two things. Big things, certainly, but just two. Love God, love people. Even I can remember this, okay? So you guys ought to be good. Love God, love people. As we begin talking about this command to love, you'll soon see that we're talking 
about God's agape love. This is different than, oh, I, I, like, I like you. I like the way you look. I like your hair. I like your dress, whatever. You know, it's so much more than that. It's even more than, hey, we share a common bond and brotherhood, camaraderie. Hey, brother. It's more than that. And so that we're on the same page. This is the really condensed version. Agape love is a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. That that becomes the priority. They become the priority instead of you. Whether we're talking about God, God becomes the priority instead of me. You become the priority instead of me. That is really condensed. There's a lot more to it. Go read about it. (laughs) But that's what we're talking about today. So store that away and know that that's what I mean when I'm talking about love, okay? So back to Jesus' most important commands. He said, first, love God with everything that you are. Everything about you, love God. Don't hold anything back, fully devoted, sold out 100% to God. It's way more than just an emotional thing about God. It's easy to get emotional, especially when we're, we're... having this wonderful worship that we had today. We say, oh, Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. Yes, it's all about, and it's easy to get emotional about that, and that's okay because emotions are part of who you are, aren't they? Your emotions should be involved in your love for God, but it's more than that. We're talking about a total commitment that all that I am and all that I do is based on my love for God. I'm I'm his, all his, all in, total commitment. I'll never stop. I don't take days off from loving God. I don't get a vacation week where I don't have to love God that week. No, total commitment all the time. He is in, and, and it also includes total obedience, that he is in control of my life, absolute control. So Jesus says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he adds, equally important to this, because we all say, yes, God deserves our love. We get that, right? I love God. But he said, equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. And we've talked about this already a number of times. As Jesus' followers, we're called to love the people that God loves. Speaking on the same subject in Luke chapter 10, Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan to answer the question when he asked, and who's my neighbor? And he told this story about the Good Samaritan. And the, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. You've read it, heard it. If you haven't, read it in Luke chapter 10. The answer was basically, anybody you encounter is your neighbor. You bump into them anywhere, along the road, in the store, that's your neighbor. Love them. Love them, remembering God loved the world. In that John 3, 16, God loved the world this way. He sent his one and only son to die for us, to forgive us of our sins. So God doesn't hold back his love from anyone, right? Say amen real quick. He doesn't. But he wants us to love the people that he loves, which is everybody. Jesus didn't hesitate to ask of us these two very uncomplicated but very difficult things. Love God all out. Love everybody else too. Because I love them. And so we're left with this thought, how do I do that? How am I supposed, you know, two things very simple to remember, but whoa, that's a big job, right? How am I supposed to do that? And the answer is directly related to last week's focus, which you didn't get to hear, so you get to hear it today. It's all about Jesus. It's how we do it. It's all about Jesus. We read earlier from 1 John chapter 4, and thank you, Kathy, for sharing that with us today, that the Apostle John wrote to the churches and wanting those Jesus followers to understand this vital love, what this vital love is. It's not just a command but it is the means by which we love. That's what he was talking about. 
in this passage, did you hear how many times John described how you're able to love God and love people? <clears throat> I want to just point these out to you. If you have your Bible, you might even want to open it up and mark them here because there's a whole bunch of them. How am I able to love God and love people the way Jesus said I'm supposed to love them? In verse 7, he said, love comes from God, right? As a matter of fact, in verse 8, he adds, God is love. So you want to know how to love? This is the, this is the one you want to be thinking about, God. He is love. Verse 10, this is real love, he said, that God loved us. We've experienced God's love. Jesus followers, you've experienced God's love. Isn't that amazing? He looked at you. And he said, what a mess. He looked at me and said, whoa. That's <laughs> but I love you enough to send my son to die for you. Because I want to be in a relationship with you. We've experienced God's love. This is real love. That God has loved us. And then he adds in verse 11, our motivation for loving people is, well, since God loved you that way, you ought to love them too, because he loves them just the same. In verse 12, he said, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. I love that phrasing. That's in the New Living Translation. I love that, how that's phrased, that his love is brought to full expression in us as we love, as we love him, as we love, God, uh, love people. In verse 13, he says, God has given us his spirit, which is the evidence that he is in us. In verse 15, he repeats this thought again. Jesus follower, God is living, grows more perfect. Not because we're more perfect, but because God is living in us. And he is perfect. In verse 19, he says, we love because he loved us. First. We love because he loved us first. Without that, we have no way to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, soul, mind, strength. <clears throat> Without this, we have absolutely no hope of loving the people around us that he loves. Can't do it. Devoted, sold out love for God is not a task that you must accomplish on your own. That's a praise the Lord thing, isn't it? That we don't have to do this by our own strength, by our own abilities, that we don't have to somehow get better and better and better at loving God ourselves, because I can't. No. It doesn't come from us. Our selfless love, your selfless love for other people isn't some burdensome chore that you have to somehow manufacture by your own means. That you somehow have to say, oh, I've got to do this. As a Jesus follower, you need to realize that God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, lives in you. All of God, right there. And that God is love. Love comes from God. As you live in that reality, by that I mean accept that it's true and trust him to do what he said he would do. As you live in that reality, your love grows more perfect, he says. Not by anything that you do other than accepting the fact that God's love is perfect. He's in me. Okay. Then, my, then I'm expressing the, his love and I get better at it. We do get better at it, right? Please tell me we get better at it. Okay, good. <clears throat> because we become more like Jesus. Christ-likeness builds in us. It's a process. And you're able to actively, in this world, love God and love people as he instructed. Not be, again, not because you're so good at it, but because God is. <laughs> He lives in you. He is the source. 
Romans 5, 5 says, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through his Holy Spirit, who he has given to us. Who's doing all the work with this love stuff? God is. Poured it into us, given us his spirit. He gave him to us. I said last Sunday to myself, because you weren't here to hear it, (laughs) that the Christian life is not transactional. It's relational. We need to live in that reality that this is not about me doing things for God. It is that God is doing things through me in that relationship I have. And live in that relationship with God through Jesus. Now, you probably already know, if not, I'm going to tell you just straight out, this kind of love for God and love for people doesn't just happen. I don't want to make it sound like that. Like all I have to do is sit back and, oh, there, I'm loving God and loving people. No, it doesn't just happen, right? God is the source, but we are the conduit. We're, we have responsibilities here. And I want you to just think of it like a hose, all right? God, it's frozen now, but think summer hoses. God is a limitless, limitless reservoir of love within us. Praise the Lord. Thanks to Jesus. He's within us. So this unlimited reservoir of love is within us. Jesus describes God in us as in John 4 as a fresh, bubbling spirit within them, giving them eternal life. So it's just like, it's like you can't stop it. Geyser like. Right? Never ends. And that infinite source of agape love then flows through us like water through a hose as we actively seek to give glory to God and intentionally work for the well being of people other than ourselves. Does it make sense? Yeah. We're a hose. His love flows, and when we are, His love flows freely through us. So with Jesus living in you and God is love, you have all the love in the world. Never a shortage. No, no short supply. Please, don't kink the hose. That's the idea. Just don't kink the hose. Submit to the guidance and provision of Christ who lives in you. That's what we do. We submit. We say, okay, God, yes. We say yes to him. Because when the Spirit is living in us, he's going to guide us to those opportunities to express his love for the people around us. He's going to lead us to the opportunities where we can come together and worship and express our praise and our love for God. But it's not just here. It's everywhere we go. Every place we, everything we do, everything we say, it's going to express our love for God because we're trusting him. For everything in us. And so we submit. We say, yes, God. You want me to go here? I'll go here. You want me to say that? I'll say that. You want me to do this thing? Okay. And when we do that, the love flows freely. I should add, to the degree that we do that, the love flows. I've kinked the hose before, have you? Yeah. Yeah. God says, isn't it amazing? Because he still loves us. Still loves us completely. He says, okay. You get it now? You see what you did there? You missed this opportunity. You didn't do that thing I told you. You kinked the hose. Will you let it go? And I get to choose. We all get to choose. Do I can't unkink the hose and, and ask forgiveness and say, Lord, forgive me. I, I did it. Please help me not to do that again. Praise the Lord for his love. None of us would be here without it. So submit to the guidance and provision of Christ in you. Choose his life lo- and his love to flow through you. You see, that was Jesus' plan for his followers, the church, from the very start. 
that we would live as, he, as Paul described in Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, where Paul was just talking about himself, and he says, when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. When I was trying to do all this stuff that I'm supposed to do by myself, all it did was condemn me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all of its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So, because Christ lives in me, so I, I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Whoa. Did you hear that? Let me read this to you one more time. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me, so I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all of its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The same one, Jesus, who said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The same Jesus who said, oh yeah, and love, love your neighbor like yourself. Remember that, what love is, it's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of another other than yourself, whether it's God or the people around you. Loving God, first command, choosing His way. Serving, seeking what He wants instead of what you want in life. Ask, what does God want me to do in this situation? And then unkink the hose and let his love flow. Stop trying to do it yourself. Remember, you don't have to. You get to submit to the Spirit and the Christ and Christ who lives in you. The Spirit of Christ who lives in you. Submit to him. Say yes, God. Yes. In 1984, I was moved by a song by a Christian band called White Heart. This came to my mind. I hadn't heard the song since 1984 probably. But, it, but the thought of it stuck in my mind. It was called Let Your First Thought Be Love. I asked Mike about singing it today, but he doesn't have that 80s hairstyle that, that you really need for such a thing. So we, we didn't do that today. But I just wanted, to, if you get a chance to listen to it, it's really a very simple song like many of them in the 80s were, it just burrowed into my head as a challenge, this one line that got repeated over and over and over and over again. Let your first thought be love. Let your very first thought be love. And I think it captures what Jesus wants for each of us as his followers. Let your first thought be love. Fully devoted, sold out, in love with God. Lord, I love you. Let that be the first thing that comes to your mind. And let your first thought be love. That selfless love for the people around you whom God loves very, very much. All of them. <laughs> let your first thought, your very first thought, be love. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much for loving us, for loving me, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Remind us of that again today. How deep the Father's love for us. guide us through this day, Lord, with that thought in our minds. Give us opportunity to express your love. 
not just to you here today as we worship you, but to others who are around us. May our love for God and for people become that natural and automatic for us that our very first thought would always be love. As we ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory.
Praise God. Precious Lord, we've sung the words. I'll do this. You ask me to love God, love people. I'll do it. Would you guide us from here this morning, Lord? Because we can't find that way ourselves. Would you provide for us all the love that we need? We know you have it and you want to. Lord, would you help us to submit to that in our lives today? Help, help me, Lord. Help each of us, Father, to unkink the hose so that our love, that love for you would just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and, grow and, and take over us and spill out to everybody around us as we love your love to them. And we'll give you the praise and the glory, Father, as you do that work in us and through us. And so we trust you, Lord, with that. And we'll give you the glory and the honor for all of it because it's not about us. We can't do it. It's about you. Praise your name. Praise your name. The name that we ask all this in, the name of Jesus, our Savior, our King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go with God. <laughs>